Greetings to all of you Fire Emblem fans. You are watching Chapter 3 of my Fire Emblem 5, Paragon Mode 0% Girls Playthrough. We are Don Emblem 1 and Mecha. Hi. Chapter 3 is where the real Fire Emblem fun begins. The first two maps were really easy and just trying to get you into it. Chapter 2X, it was like, it had a lot of dick moves, but it wasn't really complicated. And this chapter has a really intricate puzzle, and it's not the main objective, but the side objective that we need to um, think about. Uh, up north is a castle with a throne that we need to seize, but there is also a prison cell in the middle with four NPC kids with zero movement. According to the plot, they are tired and starved, so they cannot move. But they really want to go home, and each has a corresponding home that they need to go to, and rescuing those kids unlocks certain benefits. Some of them give items that we do not really need, so um, two of the kids were just going to let brought in their prison cell. But one of them unlocks a warp staff later on if he's brought to the right home, and another gets us a recruitable character. And we need to recruit everyone for triple S rank, so that's exactly what we need to do, is bring those two kids home. So in order to bring those two kids back home, we have to employ the Don Don Classic, that is some very long rescue chains. And in order to set our units up in position for those rescue chains, we have to employ even more rescue chains. So that's exactly what we did on turn 1. One of the first things that we did in this map was to bring Safi all the way to the front of our group. And it's not often that putting a completely defenseless unit on the front lines is strategically sound, but that's exactly what we did. And this caused one of the enemy soldiers to be enticed by Safi's feminine form and try to claim her as his own. But Halvin saw this and was a bit enraged because he is a gentleman, and he walked up to him and gave him a good smacking across the face with an axe. So Safi is alright. Um, the reason that we did this is because Avel has to reach the tile in which a soldier was standing on turn 1, and the only reliable way to remove that soldier on turn 1 is to force him to capture Safi. The alternative would have been to try to kill him with Dogdar, but at this point Dogdar would be carrying Leaf, so he'd have his stats cut in half, and his chances of one round KOing the soldier are incredibly slim. I want to discuss for a moment the considerations that went into playing this giant rescue chain that we're going to be doing. Every unit in this map has roles that they are particularly suited for, and what I mean by this is to take for example uh, our 7 and 8 move infantry units, which are Lifis, Ronan, Dagdar, and Avel. Because Avel is the most mobile infantry unit in our group, she is really the only candidate that we have who can rescue an NPC kid on turn 3. But in order to help her do that, then we're going to employ our 7 move units to unlock the doors. And that's exactly what Ronan and Lifis are doing. Now Dogdar, he's also a 7 move unit, but he's the only one of those 4 units who can rescue Leaf without taking a movement penalty, so that's going to be exactly what he's doing. The rest of our 6 move units are going to be sort of hanging back to bring up the rear of the rescue chain. And with the exception of Orson, we scooted Orson up to the front because he is the only one of our units who can really somewhat reliably one round KO the enemy armor knight that just attacked Ronin at 2 range due to having access to the Puji along with his 3 pursuit critical to guarantee a critical hit. And of course we used Finn and Halvin to sort of scoot Orson along because Orson is a fairly fat unit. It's worth noting that we disarmed Finn, we traded away his Brave Lands and that way uh, the enemies prioritize attacking him instead of Halvin, which is what we want, and the enemies don't want to attack Halvin because he has 1-2 range equipped with his shitty but useful, in this case, hand axe. Um, it's worth noting, we're not using Finn to go indoors because if he does, then he has to dismount and lose a lot of movement like he did last chapter, so instead he's going to mostly do work outdoors. Yeah, we didn't point this out because it seemed fairly obvious, but when Finn's outdoors and on his horse, uh, he gets all the benefits that mounted units normally get throughout the Fire Emblem series. Namely, he gets to move again after completing an action. And in this game, that includes moving after attacking, much like how it worked in FE9 and FE10, if you're familiar with those games. And of course, if Finn were to dismount, then he loses horse, and he'd lose that ability. Now is probably a good time to talk about our newest recruits, Lethus and Safi. Leafus is a thief, and as is tradition in Fire Emblem, he does not have very good combat, he actually has zero pursuit critical, but he does have some very good thieving abilities. He can open chests and doors with his lockpick, and he can also steal a lot of things, not just items, but if his build is big enough, he can actually steal weapons, and a lot of novice players like to grind up his build in order for him to steal very heavy weapons, but we're obviously not going to do that, we're just going to use him for stealing and opening locks. 
um, Safi, or as I like to call her, Staffy, is also going to be very useful. Um, not just for getting captured, but also because she's the first person who can use the warp staff that we are unlocking in this very chapter. So that is going to save a bunch of turns on its own. And then she's also the only person who can use the hammer or repair staff to get that warp staff back to full uses, and that's going to save even more turns. So I expect to see a lot of Staffy in this playthrough. We've been too preoccupied with transporting units around and opening doors to take care of all of the enemies that have been pestering us, and on this enemy phase is going to bite us in the butt a little bit. Ronan has a bit of a precarious chance of death here. He has to dodge at least one of the three enemies that attack him. The two soldiers and the mage, that is. And sometimes the soldiers can have a bit more strength than what they have in this video, in which case Ronan would have to squeeze out an extra dodge. But overall his chances of survival in this case are pretty modest. He does cap out this enemy phase in pretty stylish fashion by one hit KOing the mage with a critical hit. And the mage for some reason decided to attack him at 2 range when he would have been much safer attacking Ronan at 1 range, uh, but this game has some funky AI sometimes. Avo is tasked with one round KOing the enemy boss on the throne, and we've seen her do this before, twice already in fact, with the fire sword from range. This boss, much like the chapter 2 boss, also has a bit of stat fluctuation, so we checked the stats prior to the beginning of the chapter to make sure he didn't have too much HP or magic, and fortunately this time I didn't screw up my math. So Avel gets to cleanly one round KO him. And before we finish up this chapter, we have to get the kids back to their houses. To do so, we're going to employ a couple of gigantic rescue chains. Safi got captured again uh, by another soldier, and this was actually deliberate too. Uh, we wanted her to get captured because, uh, for one, if she didn't get captured, that soldier would probably attack Tania instead and block the way so she couldn't receive the last uh, kid. And the other reason was, this way, Safi gets to participate in a give-take to get that kid to Tania. Otherwise, Finn would be short of doing that. And she also gets a heal in this way. If you have the time, I want you to go back and take a look at some of our inventory management during this map, because there was a lot of training going on that we sort of kind of ignored for a little bit. But that training is pretty important, because there's a big event that happens in this map. Actually, you notice that Leaf is gone, and we're scrolling through some cutscenes that were skipping really quickly. And the items that Leaf, Lifis, and Dogdar are carrying at the end of this map uh, have some pretty far out implications for some of the upcoming maps. So go ahead and review those. Thanks for watching Chapter 3, completed in 5 turns. We'll see you next time. See ya.